Hello everybody and welcome to this A-level chemistry video about atom economy. Now atom economy is a percentage value that indicates what percentage our, of our reactants are turned into useful products. So in other words, we can use that percentage to decide how wasteful a reaction might be. So we could get a 100% yield but only convert a small proportion of our reactants into products and so that might actually not be financially viable. Now the atom economy percentage is really useful because it lets us know um, how many raw materials we're going to need and how effective we're being with the raw materials and so if we make a small amount of waste that's obviously really good for the environment and we will have a limited number of byproducts that maybe don't have any particular uses. Now of course one thing that we can do is we can maybe sell on the byproducts depending on what they are and make an additional profit for our company. But if there are byproducts that are completely useless and maybe need to dis be disposed of, that will definitely increase costs further. Of course, the main reason, I think, why a high percentage atom economy is good is that it allows us to um, maximise the environmental protection that we have for our process. It maximises the sustainability of what we're doing, because if we're not producing very much waste, then this is more of a sustainable process than one that has a high percentage of waste. And so a high percentage atom economy is better for the environment because we aren't using up so much of the Earth's resources to make our product. And it also means that we're making fewer waste products that need to be disposed of and hopefully minimising the harmful chemicals as part of the waste. And also it's better for society because if chemical companies can make their products, maybe medicines or other detergents and things like that, in a more cheap, less wasteful way, then we will benefit from this as well because the lower prices can be passed on and made available to the public. And so atom economy is one of the factors affecting whether or not we should do a process in a particular way. So we've, all, we've got, of course, rate of reaction, so how fast we get our product, yield, so how much of our product we actually make, environmental impact or waste, which is the atom economy percentage, and of course overall cost, which we can't escape from, the company will definitely be interested in that. And so all of this feeds into the considerations of the company, cost and environmental impact, and how much product they actually can make and sell. Let's move on now to take a look at how we calculate percentage atom economy. Now this first equation we've got here encapsulates the ideas from the previous slide really nicely. Um, so first of all, there is only one product, and since there is only one product, this is 100% atom economy. However, you will recognise the reversible reaction symbol, which tells us that the percentage yield is definitely not going to be 100%. If we take a look at this second equation, which is the reaction of sodium hydroxide and chlorine to produce specifically sodium chlorate 1, which is used in bleach, and so a really useful product, and also sodium chloride and water as byproducts, we can work out the percentage atom economy from here. And just by inspecting the equation, you can see that we've got two sodium in our reactants, and we've only got one in our useful products. And similarly, there are two chlorine in our reactants, but only one in our target molecule. And it's the same principle for oxygen. There's only one in our tar target molecule, but there's two in the reactants. Now, the equation that we use to calculate atom economy is here. The percentage atom economy is the mass of the desired product divided by the total mass of the reactants multiplied by 100. So this is a case of working out the MRs of all the reagents involved, or at least the desired product and all of the reactants. And so we add together our sodium and our oxygen and our chlorine, and we get the target MR of 74.5 grams of sodium oxygen and chlorine, so sodium chlorate, and then the sodium hydroxide, the MR of sodium hydroxide is 40, but there are two of them, and the MR of chlorine is 71, and so we need to add that 80 to the 71, and we get 151 grams of sodium hydroxide. 
Incidentally, this equation is balanced because the sodium chloride and the water add together to top the sodium chlorate up to 151 grams. So we've got 151 grams of reactant and 151 grams of product. But all we needed was the MR of sodium chlorate, 74.5, divide it by 151 and then multiply it by 100 and we get a percentage of 49.3. Always give your percentages to one decimal point, please. And so what that means is just under half of the starting materials that we've paid money for are turned into desired product. So there's a greater than a 50% waste. Let's finish by looking at three examples where we can calculate the percentage atom economy by setting the scene and saying which process should we use to make copper sulfate. Maybe we want to use it for a pesticide or something like that. So we've got three chemical reactions as shown here. The first one is from copper reacting with sulfuric acid to make copper sulfate and hydrogen. The second one has copper oxide reacting with sulfuric acid to make copper sulfate and water. And the third one has copper carbonate reacting with sulfuric acid to make copper sulfate and water and carbon dioxide. And so we calculate the percentage atom economy by dividing the mass of the de desired product, copper sulfate, each time by the total mass of reactants. So have a go at those. Pause the screen. And if we have a look, the mass of copper sulfate is 159.6. And that's the same for all three of our calculations. The total mass of reactants varies each time. So the MR of these two adds together to make 161.6. And then the MR of copper oxide and sulfuric acid adds together to make 177.6. And then the MR of copper carbonate and sulfuric acid adds together to make 221.6. So in each case, those total masses of the reactants goes on the bottom of our calculation. And when we crunch the numbers, here are the percentages we get in each case. And so at first glance, it looks like we should definitely do the first process because it's got the greatest atom economy and so therefore the lowest percentage waste. However, what you might remember from before GCSE maybe even is that copper and sulfuric acid actually won't react together. Copper is less reactive than hydrogen, so you won't get a reaction taking place at all. So on paper, it looks great, but in practice, this reaction just won't happen. So we move on to the next two. And the next one, well, 89.9%, still pretty high, not very much waste. But this reaction requires heating. It's really quite slow. So it's got a slow rate of reaction. So you might choose to move on to the third reaction because copper carbonate and sulfuric acid reacts instantaneously and it, it fizzes like crazy. So this is actually quite fast. So even though you've only got a 72% atom economy, you might choose to make the process quicker by using the faster reaction of copper carbonate. However, we've got one last concern, which is the environmental impact. This produces carbon dioxide, which contributes to climate change. And so it's a bit of a tough one, which one we'd use. And we'd need to know precisely the cost of providing that heat energy to make the second reaction faster, um, because producing energy to make reactions speed up also produces carbon dioxide, which again contributes to climate change. So it's a complicated issue and it's no, there's no one factor involved. There's lots of different factors that we'd need to consider all of them. The good news for you in terms of exam questions is that this will be really straightforward. They will give you an equation and they will ask you to calculate the percentage atom economy and maybe consider one additional factor, not lots like I've been mentioning here. Okay, that's the final thing we were going to cover in this video, so that's all done. We've covered a lot today. Well done. There was some tough stuff. I hope it was useful, and I'll see you again really soon. Bye-bye.